Hello, YouTube Sidekick here with another installment of the Iron Bomber's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, by the way, I hope you like our new logo and intro music, and thank you very much to Plus9 at the A4 Discord channel for giving me a hand with that. Today we have a special episode on iron bombing with the CP741 computer in the A4. I wanted to make the video to remind everyone that the external flight model, or EFM, of the A4 is still a very much in development. And in fact, there will be another EFM alpha test event on Saturday, the 16th of January. So if you'd like to participate, check out the link in the description of the video. So um, we have spent a lot of time in this series flying around in circles in the A4 on the iron bombing range. A lot of time. All of that flying has been done with the SFM or simple flight model version because that's the one that's publicly available. But today we're going to fly some patterns in the EFM and see how it compares. Uh, and of course one of the biggest differences will be that the EFM includes the CP741 bombing computer. So the plan for today is to introduce the CP741 and the steps for getting it set up. Then we need to think a little bit about how to plan an approach using the CP741. And then we'll go out to the range and we'll fly some approaches with the simple flight model. Um, then we'll fly some approaches with the EFM. Uh, manually, and then we'll fly some approaches in the EFM using the CP741. So, let's get started. The CP741 is a basic ballistic computer. During a dive bombing attack, the computer basically looks at the aircraft state vector and the target location and determines when it thinks the bomb's projected flight path will end at the target. Um, technology like this has been installed in aircraft pretty much since the late 1960s, and there's even a rudimentary version actually in the F-86 in the 50s. What has changed since then is how to use the computer's calculations and display them to the pilot. The earliest version, like the one in the Sabre, provided an aiming mark, but very limited capability to drop the bomb automatically. It basically required that the approach be done very precisely to get decent results. The CP741 improved on that in terms of accuracy and flexibility, but it still provided no real cues to the pilot. The pilot kind of had to take it on faith that everything was lined up and that the magic would happen on schedule. The advent of heads-up displays in the late 1960s and 70s provided a chance to use the information being calculated by a computer and provide more insight to the pilot. And ultimately, this converged on what we now call uh, either CCIP or CCRP, symbology. And in fact, the later versions of the A4, uh, particularly the A4M, included a HUD with this symbology. So here's the process for using the CP741 in the A4 EFM. One, set up and fence in as per normal, set everything just the way you normally would, with the exception that you want to turn the bombing switch to labs. Now note that this is not labs, but for now, this is the switch position that is implemented in the alpha release of the EFM, although this will change eventually. The uh, computer bombing mode will have its own switch position. After that's done, you need to turn on the radar and set it to air-to-ground mode, and that's down on your left-hand side. Then, when you're uh, conducting the approach, you have to place the reticle over the target and then press the pickle and hold. This will cause the lab's light to come on. And when the aircraft reaches the release point, the bombs will release and the light will go out. So we need to adapt our standard bombing approach a little when we use the CP741. Normally we roll in, put the, the lift vector on the target, and pull up until the flight path vector is on the target. And then we pull up to the aim off mark and wait for the reticle to cross the target. Instead, what we'll do with the CP741 is we will leave the site set to zero, so no depression on the site. We'll roll in and pull up uh, as per usual. Once we've got the flight path vector on the target, we'll roll out and we'll start to pull up to the aim off mark. As the reticle goes over the target, we'll pickle and hold. And then we'll continue to move the flight path vector to our aim off mark. And we'll do what we've done before, we'll just wait. But this time, instead of actually have to, having to manually release the bomb, the bomb will release automatically at the right time. Um, that'll make a little bit more sense. We're out on the range and we're giving it a try, so let's go out there and do that now. Okay, here we are on the iron bombing range in an A4, and this is a, an SFM uh, version of the A4. Just to uh, 
just to do a little warm up and kind of get a baseline so we can compare the EFM to it. So we're just climbing out uh, at the beam position here and starting our roll around the target. Going to do a standard approach. Going to try and start it around 12,500. So we're already past that. We need to get down a little bit. And we'll just see how we do. So uh, nothing very exciting here. Same kind of approach that we've been flying in this Iron Bomber's Guide to the Galaxy series off and on now for, uh, for quite a while. Let's get the feel for the airplane because the thing uh, you will find with the EFM uh, is that it, it does fly quite differently. Um, I, the best way to describe it is the, the aircraft feels like it has a little, quite a bit more weight. There's a bit more inertia behind the controls, but that also means that they're a little um, they're a little smoother, I find. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that is when we're trying to do the uh, lining up on the target. And speaking of lining up on the target, we're just about there now. Coming around. And we're going to roll in. Okay, get the lift vector aimed at the target. Pull up until the top of the sight ladder, which is our flight path vector, is on. It bounces around a little bit. All right, and get it lined up. And pull up to the aim off and hold and hold and pick. Let's see how we do. Okay, not bad. All right, well let's. Uh, Let's get ourselves in a, an EFM aircraft here. So we'll, we'll change uh, the livery out uh, just a sec. And the other thing, the first thing you're going to notice here <laughs> when I'm flying the EFM, uh, we've taken some of the ordnance off the aircraft. Uh, that's because when I was trying it out, uh, I found that, uh, you know, before I just had it loaded up with 10 Mark 82s, uh, and the patterns were just too painful. Uh, in the EFM carrying that much ordnance. Uh, so that's one of the differences with the EFM is the aircraft actually feels the, the bomb load a lot more. So here we are in standard pattern. We're just starting our turnaround here. Well, we're about halfway through our turnaround. And uh, we're just coming around trying to get ourselves lined up. So this is a manual drop. So we're going to use exactly the same procedure as we did the last time. But this time we're flying it in the external flight model version. And it's not obvious, probably on screen, but I can tell you that that, that it is a bit smoother. Um, there's not quite as, as much sort of bouncing around uh, as there is in the SFM. But there's also a bit more inertia, so you have to think a bit farther ahead, too. So there is that. All right, so we're coming around, getting ready for the roll-in. And there we go. And we roll in. Lift vector to target, pull up. Now you can see this is smoother. This is definitely smoother. Nice, much smoother rollout and a much smoother uh, rollout. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, I'm really noticing that it's smoother. Now we're pulling up to the aim off mark. Yeah, we stop at the aim off mark a lot more easily, actually. Yeah, that's a lot more controllable, actually. Interesting. And there we go with the drop. And not bad. Okay, well, let's go around and do that again. But, yeah, I can definitely say that uh, in terms of, especially I notice, uh, you know, when we're going through the lining up on the target, when smooth motions uh, are really what you need. And, and there's no question that the EFM uh, is a bit smoother than the SFM is. Um, it's that sort of extra inertia. You know, and it just is a nice shot with the slats deploying in the EFM, which is one of the features. So we're going to go around again. We'll see if we can uh, we can match that accuracy in another manual drop. All right, we're turning around the target here, and going to come in around twelve thousand five hundred again. I think we're a little high. Lose a little bit of that tightening a little bit. Once again, we're going to look to try and be nice and smooth. Yeah, this is looking good. It uh, might be a little bit steep. That's okay. Yeah, it's actually not too bad. So let's roll in. Our roll in was a little late on that one. 
Okay, nice smooth pull around. Yeah, I can definitely say, yeah, the EFM is definitely smoother at this. Now we're a little bit offline. Make sure we don't overcorrect. Hold it at the aim off, hold it at the aim off, and pickle. And how did we do? Not bad at all. All right, so that's a couple of manual runs with the EFM. And, and I can definitely say, I, I, you know, I prefer the EFM for doing this kind of bombing. Um, it, it's a lot uh, less sort of exciting uh, during the approach because because the extra inertia, the extra kind of damping on the on the motions. So um, so that's good. Now, of course, you know, the best thing in the EFM is uh, what we're going to try now, which is the fact that we don't have to do manual bombing. Uh, we get a chance to do some uh, automatic mode bombing with the CP741. So to do that, we have to get ourselves uh, set up. And uh, the two things that we have to change, we have to change the selector nod to labs, and we have to get the radar on in air-to-ground mode. Uh, and we're also going to want to remember to change our sight back to zero here when we get a chance. So we're going to set the sight depression angle back to zero. So important thing to remember here is that when we roll in this time our flight path vector is going to be at the top of the 50 mil circle. It's not going to be at the top of the ladder anymore. It's going to be at the top of the 50 mil circle. So that's what we're going to put over the target when we roll in. And then we're going to start to pull up to the aim off mark, same as we always do. But as the reticle crosses the target, we're going to press the pickle button and we're going to hold. And we're going to get to the aim off mark and do what we always do. We're just going to have a nice constant dive, but the computer is going to decide when to drop the bombs. So here we go, pulling the lift vector to the target, get the flight path vector over it, get ourselves lined up, start to pull up to the aim off mark, pickle as we cross the target, keep the pull up going, and there go the bombs when the light goes off. Now we do. Okay, not great, and uh, that's because we were to the right a little short. Um, and that's probably because we weren't very well lined up. I'm not sure the wings were entirely level. So uh, the CP bombing with the CP741 is going to really put a premium on uh, a wings level approach. So let's go around and do that again, and this time let's really focus on getting ourselves straight out. Uh, before we designate the target. Yeah, so there is no question that the, uh, the EFM uh, is a huge improvement over the SFM uh, in terms of being realistic, but also um, I think uh, for bombing, uh, it makes the A4 a much sta more stable platform. So don't forget that if you want to try any of this stuff out, there is a, an EFM alpha test event on January the 16th. It's open to anybody. The link is in the video description, and you can uh, go to the Discord channel there and sign up and uh, have a chance to try out the EFM um, and see where it is. It's, it's currently in alpha form. There, there's still a few wrinkles that the developers are working out, but I have to say that that it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty... Um, it's a pretty good product right now. I'm really enjoying flying it and uh, hope you get a chance to join the test and uh, help the developers um, you know, improve it even more. So we're going around here. All right, try and get that around 12,500. So wings nice and level. Nice, uh, smooth, straight pull-up. That's what we got to focus on this time. I think. All right, let's, uh, let's take her down. So, lift vector to target. Pull the flight path vector. That's the top of the circle. Over the target. Nice, smooth rollout. Roll out all the way. Try to get it, yeah, get it lined up better there. I think that's better. Slow pull-up. Pickle as we cross the target and hold there and bomb's gone. And that's pretty good. So I think that's enough um, 
testing of the EFM on the bombing range today. We, uh, we went out and showed that uh, we can get pretty good results uh, using manual mode. It's uh, probably even a more stable bombing platform than it was as an SFM. Uh, but then again, with the bombing computer, you know, takes it to a whole other level uh, and really takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Although you still have to fly a pretty careful approach to get the most out of it. So as per usual, if you're enjoying these videos, uh, folks, please subscribe to the channel and get that notification on. Don't forget about the EFM testing event uh, on Saturday, January the 16th. Uh, I hope to see some of you there. I, I think I'll probably be trying to take part as best I can. But for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.